All right, in this video, I'm going to walk through the steps of bringing in a model into the modeling room inside of 3D Code and passing it around through the other rooms. We're going to go to the paint room. We're going to go to the, the sculpt room. We're going to go to the Retopo room and just round trip this model through the different rooms, just showing you what that process is like. All right, so let's go ahead and start in the modeling room. We'll go ahead and import a mesh. Now, typically you think you're going to import by going to the file import. I find for me, the best way to bring these in into the modeling room is to go under the mesh and import from here. Navigate to your model and import that in. And so now you're going to get a model and it's not really in here. This is just a preview of what you're going to import. You haven't committed anything yet. If you want to commit the model, then you can either hit enter or apply. All right, so now we've got this model in here. And if you look under the layers, you'll see that, that this model is all under one, one actual layer. I'm going to show you how to separate these meshes and put them in their own layers. Let's go ahead and get rid of this dummy layer here. All right, so everything is under this one layer. We'll name this layer body. All right, and so now let's go ahead and create a new layer and start adding the other parts. Um, this layer, we'll call this wing nut. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go to the tools menu here and use the select tool, make sure you're on faces and just go ahead and double click. And that's going to highlight all the faces of that mesh. Once that's selected, select the layer you want to move it to, and then just choose this icon here with the arrow. And now this mesh is in this layer. So we can just go ahead and turn that off. And let's go ahead and get these other pieces in here as well. Uh, we'll create a new layer, call these nuts. And what we're going to do here is the same process. Double click to select it, hold shift, and double click on the next um, mesh that you want to bring in. And again, continue. And I think that's everything. Oh, and this. And now we'll go ahead and place those in this layer here. So go ahead and hit the one with the arrow. And now that's it. All right. One last set are the threads. So again, another layer. We'll name that threads. All right. One more. All right, there we go. Now we have everything in its own layer. So if we reveal the layers, voila. If you want to isolate a mesh and you have a lot of layers, just hold the Alt key and click the little I, and that will hide everything except this one. So this is how you isolate a mesh. Okay, so the next step, we want to make sure we start to form our UVs. I like to do the UVs in the modeling room. If I'm in, if I'm already in the modeling room, I'd rather just stay in the modeling room and do my UVs here. So to do UVs, slide your tools all the way until you see the UV section. And then you can just go ahead and click any, any one of these UV tools. And you'll see that it's revealed all these tools are now in context of UV workflows. I'll show that again. So if I'm if I'm not in the UV tool, these are other tools. But as soon as I switch to the UV tool, these are all UV contexts. All right, great. So we'll just go ahead and use the edge loop since there's so many um, like obvious loops that we can be selecting. And when I hover my cursor over, and you see that the UV preview is showing a real messy. It just it's just showing you an island that's not has not already been UV'd, so it's just a big mess. And by the way, if you don't have this UV panel open, um, I went ahead and just brought it in myself. So you go under Windows, Panels, and then you can go down to UV Preview, and then that will bring in a window, and then you can just dock it wherever you like. So let's go ahead and start breaking this model. All right, so now uh, you'll notice that there's a different color. 
uh, that just means that this is now a different island than this. So let's go ahead and continue to cut this up. And now this is just a preview of what the unwrap will look like. All right, and it hasn't been unwrapped yet, so you see this is still empty. Um, again, just a preview. All right, so now that one's done, so let's go ahead and um, separate these. Cut that there. Do the same. Cut the inside. All right, we'll split this one. That looks good. And now we've got to set this up. All right. And then finally, this guy. I think this one we can just cut right here and we'll be good. Okay, so this is all you need. We'll go to the next one. Maybe a little further. All right, and this guy, cut the cap, and let's see if this works. Okay, that should be fine. I think we can do this. There we go. And there we go. All right, so that's UV. Next, let's do the threads. Okay, that one's okay. That way it's not crossing over each other. Great. Do the same here. Let's see if this works. Perfect. All right, that's UV. And then finally, this set. All right, so let's do this. Cut that. Cut that. All right, we'll do the same treatment here. Cut one there, there, split that. There. All right, and let's see how to do this one. All right, and then finally, this guy here. All right, I think now we can just go ahead and unwrap everything. So over here, you just go ahead and click unwrap, and now it should unwrap this.
And uh, which one is this one? It's one of the threads. That's okay. We can do this. There we go. And unwrap again. That looks a little weird. It's probably because we forced it under the UV settings. I have it set to create a strip. Whenever it unwraps, that just tries to make things uh, as vertical or horizontal as it can be. So if I uncheck that and say OK, and then re-unwrap, that fixes it. All right, so I've got these pieces. This is all ready to go. Now let's go ahead and bring this into the paint room. So if you just jump into the paint room now, you'll see you don't have anything in here. We need to bring that in. So let's go back to the modeling room. The way you bring it in is you go under bake. It's not very intuitive, but it's under bake and then retopo per pixel painting, no baking. Make sure you choose the no baking. And we'll just go ahead and leave everything as it is. We're not going to subdivide the model. And I think 2K textures should be fine. All right. So now if we jump back into the paint room, you'll see your model is there. And if you look in the wireframe, it's exactly the same. All right, cool. Now that we have this and we have our UVs already set up, let's say you wanted to add some details to this before you actually started painting it. So I'll go ahead and add some welds around the, the bolts. Um, and the way we can do that is we're going to want to send this from the paint room to the sculpt room so we can add some sculpt details. So again, we'll go to bake. And then this time, paint mesh to sculpt mesh. So you can just go ahead and click on that. OK, so now we're in the sculpt mesh. All right, so choose the layer that you're going to paint on. In this case, it's the body. Also, I like to keep conform retopo mesh on. And what that's going to do is when I do add these welds, it's going to move the vertices to best fit that new um, displacement that I just added. Uh, set this to build and we'll use this brush here. A little bit more. Just want to not look perfect, just make it look like a um, kind of a rough weld. All right, we'll add one here. And you'll see that as I, when I'm done uh, laying down the stroke for the brush, you'll see that the vertices will readjust to fit the new displacement. And watch, Oop, there you go. This is really powerful because even though we're just going to uh, create a normal map, um, having those vertices kind of displaced with that normal map 
really sells it. Um, should I add, I'll just add really quickly some here as well. Oops, so we're going to switch that over to the wing nut. And then we can kind of add speed. Something like that. Okay, cool. So now we've um, we brought in from the modeling room, we've UV'd it, we took it to the paint room, sent it to the sculpt room, added some additional details to it, and now we're going to send it back to the paint room. And the way we do that is we need to bake this information. So we're going to jump to the Retopo room next. And this is already there. And you can see that the mesh from the paint room is already here as well. So all we need to do now is just bake, is just do a, a direct bake. So we'll go bake, bake with normals per pixel. All right, and so you wanna make sure that uh, your outer shell is swelled up enough to where it covers um, any of the actual model that's sticking through. So I'll just go ahead and just increase it a little bit more. And if you find yourself only needing it in this one little place and not everywhere else, you can just, um, you don't need to increase this anymore. So let me put this back to where we were. You can just run your cursor over it and it will automatically just bump up that area as well. So there we go. I think this is good everywhere else. Excellent. So now let's go ahead and run the bake, say okay. You can say yes to this. And we'll leave all the settings the same. All right. So let's go ahead and jump into the paint room. And we can turn off our sculpt. You can just turn off this uh, top level so you can just make that visibility off. And now what we're looking at is our model with the sculpt features applied with the normal map. Oh, it looks like I messed something up in here. Yeah, that's all right. But you can see now that even though this is a normal map, because we displaced that mesh with the, um, with the conform to Retopo, so that really sells this, I think. Uh, if we turn off the normal map, It's going to look like that, and you can see that it you can see that it is um, lifted here in the geometry. So the wireframe did bump up, and now with the normal map, there you go. Looks great. Cool. So now we've we've taken this through the different rooms, um, and I just really wanted to show that process because I get asked a lot, like how do I use the how do I use the rooms? How do I know how to send my model from one to another and pass it around? That's basically all you need to do. It's the, the secret is really just going through the bake. And also the bake is context aware. So if I'm in the paint room and I use bake, it's already preparing me to bake it to the sculpt room. If I'm in the modeling room and I use bake, it's allowing me to choose the type of bake I want. And this one right here, this Rot Retopo, no baking, is really a way of shuttling this from, from the modeling to the paint room. It, it could definitely be a little bit more intuitive, but this is how you do it. All right, so now that you're in the paint room, you can now continue with painting and uh, running your occlusions and just look debbing your model. I hope you found this helpful and thanks for watching.